Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today we're taking a look at the iPhone SE in the black color. So let's go ahead and get straight into this. You can see that iPhone tinted a little bit black. So is the Apple logo. Let's go ahead and open this right up straight into this little booklet here where we have the quick start guide, Apple logo, and or not the logo, but you know, the stickers. And uh, of course, the important thing here is the phone itself here, which is of course all black, no space gray or anything like that. It's just pure black. The sides are black and it dyes aluminum on the sides. And then the back has the glass panel. And we have this film here that we can remove, fold back, put that to one side. Real quick, let's just see what else is in the box so we can get past that. We have the little charger right here. We have the little ear pods right there. There is no adapter, so you can't connect the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack or anything. So hopefully you have one laying around if you need it. If not, you'd have to buy it from Apple or online somewhere. Lightning cable, nothing particularly special. This phone does support fast charging, meaning you'll be able to charge the battery to 50% in about 30 minutes. However, this little block right here isn't capable of providing because it's not 18 watts. You're gonna need a fast charger that you can find and buy that separately if you want to do that, which if you plan on using this phone a ton is nice because you can just plug it in for a little bit and get a nice amount of battery and then use it again, which is always helpful if you use it a lot. If not, this phone is gonna last you quite a bit. Let's go ahead and boot this guy up and talk a little bit about the design changes compared to iPhone 7s and iPhone 8s so that you can see the differences here because they don't look exactly alike. Here we have an iPhone 7. You, of course, we lost the aluminum back in the iPhone 8 when we got that and the iPhone 10. We got rid of it because we now support wireless charging on this one and also on the iPhone 8. iPhone 7 did not. So if you're upgrading from the iPhone 7, you're getting a couple of more upgrades than if you're upgrading from the iPhone 8. But still, this is a much better device than the iPhone 8 and 7 and it's also gonna last a lot longer. Also worth noting, they've moved the Apple logo to the center of the phone. Also got rid of any of the text at the bottom. The only phone here that has text at the bottom is the product red because it's a special edition. So it says that, which is very nice. Looks kind of cool on that phone. Let's turn it over here. Hello. And of course the setup and all that is going to be the same that you're comfortable with. They haven't changed anything. You don't have to use gestures. Actually, you can't use gestures in this. You have to use the home button here, which is great for people that love the home button. Now, one of the great things of course that everyone's talking about is the price point on this phone. It's $400 for 64 gigabytes. That's really great. Of course, still a lot of money. I know I can understand. And uh, you know, I'm not saying it's cheaper in, in any way iPhones and all phones in general are very expensive and you know, it all just depends on your income and everything, but $400 is a lot more feasible than 800 or 1200 or $1,500. So this is going to be a nice phone because it's actually what it's going to do. It's going to disrupt the industry quite a bit. It's going to force Android makers and all that to make slightly better phones for the same price point, because right now, as far as, you know, displays and everything, yes, Android phones have really nice displays. However, the processor inside of this, the A13, has an insane CPU and GPU that's gonna allow this phone to run anything in the App Store perfectly without a hitch. Let's go ahead and adjust our grip here. And you can see Touch ID is as fast as ever. No issues there. They didn't mention any updates regarding that because I mean, it's already fast enough. There's never been any complaints really since like the iPhone 7, it works perfectly well. Now, as far as the front or any other design changes, I can't see anything that really changed that much. It's kind of basically the exact same thing. And that's really a good thing, you know? Your cases are gonna work. Everything that you've gotten used to is gonna work, which is very good. We're just trying to set this up so we can put the wallpaper here that we got in the picture here so we can see the phone all set up and everything so you can see that, which is good. You, of course, do have Siri, so you can say, hey Siri, at any time if you're in the car or anything like that and talk to it and navigate or anything. Screen time, of course, and True Tone, which is nice. You can turn that on or off. I usually turn that off, actually, uh, just because I like it to stay purely white all the time. And haptic button, you can change it to more strong or less strong. Of course, you're used to that if you come from an iPhone 7 or 8 and you got display zoom and there you go. We have it right here. Put up the brightness all the way. Very bright display, very beautiful display. It doesn't look bad in any way. I love the way it looks. If I switch to this phone right now, I'd be fine with it. I really like it. I was playing around with the camera on the other ones and really good camera it appears to be. Definitely better than the iPhone 7 and 8. And even the front facing camera seems to be improved. That could be just because of the processor inside, 
but it could also be just some new tech in there somewhere. But overall, that camera is looks really, really good. And in most pictures, honestly, if we were to take two pictures with my iPhone 11 Pro and this, and just some random thing outside during broad daylight, yeah, it'd be kind of hard to find the $400, $600 difference. So overall, I think you're gonna get a really, really great phone here. Great thing is you can upgrade this to 128 gigs of storage for only 50 bucks. Only 50 bucks, of course, that's quite a bit of money. And uh, $50, I would say I recommend it if you have the extra money, do it if you plan on having a lot of photos or videos, because this does support 4K video recording, and you might be taking a lot more photos since the camera's better and playing around with that. So 128 would give you a lot of room there to play around with. If you wanna see here real quick the three colors, because I forgot to show it in the iPhone red video, I was supposed to show at least the white one, but I forgot. And here you can see kind of all three colors right there for yourself. I'll have a color comparison in one of the next videos so you can see it in all different lighting conditions. So make sure to check that out. The wallpapers on both of these, I forgot to change. Let me show you real quick. That didn't work, whoops. So we go to settings, here what we can see here, and the boxes, you can see that each one had a specific wallpaper that it came with, but it didn't come pre-installed for some reason. Neither did the iPads this year, which I thought was a little weird. Uh, so let's go down here, red one, on, and then right here on the black one, it was which one? Mm, I'm guessing it's one of these. Let me see the box. Let me see the box. Oh, it was the green one. That reminds me of Sprint for some reason. But there we go. Boom. There you have it. The iPhone 11 or <laughs> the iPhone SE in the black color. Beautiful device. If you've been planning on getting an iPhone, this is definitely one to consider even over the 11 and the 11 Pro for many good reasons. If you just want a smaller phone, this is the way to go. There's really no reason to get the 11 or the 11 Pro because they don't really offer anything too crazy that, uh, that for most people you'd care about, you know? You have OLED panels and all that on the 11 Pro. Are most people gonna notice that? Not really, are you, are you gonna care? Is that gonna be a $600 difference? Mm, honestly, not really. If I wasn't making videos and doing all the things that I do about tech, wasn't such a huge tech fan, I would not have this phone and I would not be spending this much money on a phone every year. I would just have this until it breaks down and then upgrade after four years because that's the more sensible choice and the more straightforward thing one should do. Um, but uh, there you see it, iPhone SE in black, very nice, very smudgy, gets super smudged. One of the things that I almost forgot was to show you guys how it looks in cases real quick. I mean, feel free to click away or anything. I add these things just because I feel like they would help me personally, just these are the things that I wanna see in a video. Here you can see it in a clear case that's a little bit matted out. I usually go with really dark cases or just black cases, or actually quite the opposite, a white case, like a silicone white case like this. Might look good, we'll see that in the next video. Here we have a smoky kind of dark clear case where you can still see the Apple logo. I think this really makes the phone shine, looks really good like this. These cases are from Totally. Thanks to them for sending these out just to check out. I'll have them down below in the description. And let's see the last one here, which is a clear case. And this is my ultimate kind of, like I hate this combination. Um, I know you can still see the phone and everything, but I personally cannot, cannot stand what you're about to see. This right here. Look at this, do you see that? That to me is killer. I can't, I can't stand the smudges. I cannot, and this, was, this just makes it impossible to not have smudges or not be cleaning it all the time. So, um, you know, some people might like it, but I cannot stand the smudges. And you are gonna get a lot of smudges with the black one. That's one of the cons and why I wouldn't really get the black one, especially since I only used to get the black one because it had the black front with the older models. And uh, now that they all have black fronts, I would definitely go for the red or the white. However, I love the, the cleanliness and the simpleness and just how good and clean the white one looks. It's all just so nice with the silver. I love it. I love the white one. I would get this phone instantly. This is the color that I wanted for my 11 Pro, but Apple made that weird silver that I didn't personally like, but love this one. And you can see it there. Of course, the two bezels right here, which I think they look perfectly fine. Nice way to hold the phone. If you're watching a movie or anything. And uh, it's actually a pro for some people because some people don't like their fingers covering part of the screen with these phones. So yeah, iPhone SE, great little device. Hopefully this video kind of helped you a bit. Please do leave a like. That actually helps the channel a ton um, because of the YouTube algorithm. So if you could do that, 
Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can and check out the other videos on the channel because hopefully they can help you out. But uh, thanks for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.